Hi, I'm Jamie Hicks of the Birmingham Bulls. Over the past four years with Goals for Kids, we've worked in cooperation with Children's Hospital to go visit the kids at the hospital twice a year. With, all, with most of the players not being from Birmingham, it's a great way for the, for the guys from the team to get involved with this, the community. As you can see, both, both sets, the kids at the hostel and the hockey players, for two hours, both have a smile on their faces. And if we can take two hours out of, time, out of our time to, uh, to create some smiles, being a father of two and having kids running around the house, I know how important it is, not only to see the kids at the hospital, but to really meet the parents at the hospital as well. This is not only a tough time for the kids, but for the parents as well.
Taking a look at the Bulls' upcoming home schedule, they return to home ice on Tuesday night, January the 11th, to take on the Jackson Bandits. Game time will be 7 o'clock at the BJCC. And then they also have a weekend game Friday night, January the 14th, when the Greensboro Generals will make their second and final visit to Birmingham that night with a start time of 7.30. As always, for more information, you can call the Bulls' ticket office at 458 8833 and if it's individual tickets you need you can always call Ticketmaster and that number is 715-6000. And it's now time for the Wendy's Biggie Question of the Week and this week's question comes from Kristen Lobler and Dennis the question this week is Kristen wants to know why in the four major sports hockey is the only sport in which fighting is really allowed you get pretty much a slap on the wrist a five minute penalty but in every other sport you get kicked out of the game, you get a possible suspension, and the league levies down some harsh punishments for fighting, whereas in hockey, it's, it's a part of the game. I don't know how it actually got started as being part of the game, but it is part of the game in the respect that you are just penalized for it, you are not ejected, and it is part of the uh, intimidation factor that goes with the game. It's a tough game, and uh, it's, a, it's just part of it. You have to be able to handle yourself to play at the high levels, and uh, it, it depends on your attitude, though. I mean, there's all kinds of people that have went through their whole career without fighting and been very successful. And uh, different guys have different mental attitudes, different makeups towards how they approach that. Some stay away from it. Some get, fires them up. Uh, some guys only do that, uh, the so-called uh, heavyweight tough guy in hockey. Sure. And uh, that's what they're there for. But uh, there's a lot of respect in the fighting part of it. Very seldom will a tough guy fight a, a finesse player. Usually it's tough guy against tough guy, or uh, if there's a, a dirty situation that's happened to one of your key players, the tough guy will go out and rectify that. And he's cut like the, the team policeman. Like, uh, and there's a lot of respect in that, and uh, it's a very tough job. You, you mentioned the tough guy fighting the tough guy. Dennis, when you played, you were known as, as a physical presence on the ice. You averaged almost over 200 penalty minutes in every year of your career, but you also were a scorer. But you have some stories back, and I remember one in particular where maybe there were some guys getting together, and you had a guy who you knew you probably could beat up rather easily, and you almost gave a guy to, to, a chance to back out for you. You almost showed some... What was that situation? Well, first of all, let me uh, tell how the rules have changed. Now when there's a fight going on, everyone has to run back to your bench and stand there. If you don't, your additional penalties and possible ejection if there's a fight ensuing the initial fight. Well, I'm not so sure that's a great rule. I know the powers to be have uh, digested this and dissected it and thought it out and tried to uh, make it a better game. But what used to happen in the old days was when there was a fight going on and somebody had dirtied you, you just waited for the referees to get involved in that. You skated over to him, you grabbed him, you took him somewhere and talked the situation over. Now, a little guy running around with a full face shield can spear you yeah. and you never get close to him. Back then, as soon as something happened, he's standing out here alone, you just hook onto him, grab him, drag him to the other end. I remember I got into it with this uh, fellow that played for Port Huron, and uh, he had speared me earlier on, and it wouldn't have been a real fair fight, so I really didn't want to just give it to him. So I waited till there was a fight, and I, I got him in a grip, and I dragged him down to the other end, and I told him, I said, look, if you ask me, I won't hit you. But you gotta ask me. And he just stood there, didn't, he looked at me, wouldn't say anything. I said, it's your decision. I'll give you one more chance. If you ask me, please don't hit me, I won't hit you. So finally he muttered, please don't hit me. And I didn't hit him, but I didn't have to beat him up to prove my point. I, I had no problems with him after that because he knew sooner or later there'd be another altercation when he was on the ice. I'd drag him to the other end of the ice and next time I'd do it. And it's kind of a helpless situation when you're at the other end. The referees are all busy down here, but it gave guys a chance to think about whether they really wanted to spear you or high stick you or whatever because ultimately you, p uh, you paid the price for it. And yeah. it, the game kind of policed itself more in those days. Yeah, rough, tough. You had to be prepared if you were going to play that way. But it did police itself. You didn't have a, a referee protecting the little guys who were playing dirty and hiding behind shields and masks. And so, Kristen, we appreciate your question there and a little bit more uh, about fighting in the, in the sport of hockey. And Dennis, as we switch gears here before we return to home ice on Tuesday night, Two big divisional games on the road as we close out the three-game road trip. It all gets started tomorrow night in Biloxi, Mississippi against the Mississippi Seawolves before moving on for a Sunday afternoon tilt with the Pensacola Ice Pilots. And you look at the Mississippi team first, they're in eighth place, but yet they're still the defending Kelly Cup champions. They are, and uh, a week or two ago they uh, played in our building. We beat them 7-6, and they managed to so score seven go or six goals on us. So that's something that we have to be concerned with. We have to cut that back. We know we're a pretty good offensive team, can score goals, but we certainly can't allow six goals in an outing, especially at home. 
and then the Pensacola Ice Pilots. It's a team last year that gave us fits, but so far this season in the three matchups, we fared a little bit better against this team, and so maybe this year a matchup against Al Peterson's club that we're able to go in and maybe take some points down in their building. Well, ideally what we want to do is we're thinking of going in and taking four points this weekend. We only have the two games and uh, we want to get points out of it. We're in first place. We have to maintain that lead and it's hard to do in our division. So we're not thinking about going in there and taking it easy. We're thinking about going in there and grabbing two quick ones the first night and grabbing two more the next night and getting out of Dodge. And finally, Dennis, how big is this going to be? Because after these two games on the road, we'll have played 20 on road ice, 15 at home. And on home ice, we have a 12-3 and record. This club has played very well at home this season. We have, and it's big. I think all those factors come into play, but you still have to play the games. You can't start uh, living on your laurels. Our 12-3 and record means nothing if we go out and start playing poorly. And, you know, you just never know from year to year. Last year, our home record was uh, not good. I think we only had 17 or 18 home wins and it wasn't good on our road record. I know we had 18, 19 uh, road wins. So you just don't know from year to year, but you'd like to think that it's uh, easier to play at home. You're in a, an environment that's familiar to you. You're in your own locker room. Everything's just more comfortable. So if we can keep that uh, 12 and three record going for the latter part of the season, duplicate that, we should be in pretty good shape. So fans, Bulls on the road this weekend in Mississippi on Saturday and Sunday before, before returning to home ice on Tuesday night to take on the Jackson Bandits. And Dennis, best of luck this weekend, and hopefully we'll keep the new year rolling just as we started off in Arkansas. Thanks, Mike. Until next week, fans, for Dennis DeRogier, I'm Michael Bentz saying so long and good night. Aren't we a team? Yeah, <laughs> okay. That's what you all right. Oh, have I got some plans for you this year? All right, Dave, the glasses, the ear, all right, you use those for the show. Gosh, darn. We, we we're right. joke about the we're rolling. I got some good outs. Okay, the guy go. with no ears? Here we go. So, so okay. Wow. I got a whole thing full of it. Okay. Anytime you're ready, though. <laughs> all right. She's a funny feminist with blue-collar charisma. She's Roseanne. Coming up next on WB21, the fun starts here.